If you've been studying parrot care for any length of time, you've probably run across the term environmental wellness. A lot of people ask themselves, why do I need to learn about environmental wellness for my pet? Well, bird behaviorists know that environmental wellness is the foundation of a content pet that engages in positive bird behavior. Hi, I'm Diane Burrows of birdsupplies.com. I'm a licensed psychotherapist who got a case of parrot fever a number of years ago. And that's when I decided to combine my clinical training with my passion for parrots so that I could help parrot caretakers just like you with resources to support parrots with challenging behaviors. Challenging parrot behaviors are more common than you think. Some of the conditions that I get contacted about all the time include things like lethargy, screaming, fighting, aggression and territorial behaviors, and of course feather plucking. A lot of my clients tell me that they've tried just about everything that they can think of to turn things around, but nothing works. Sadly, some people even rehome their pet because they become so frustrated. Before I get into the components of environmental wellness, though, let's briefly talk about the major causes of challenging behavior in the first place. You probably acquired your pet because of its exotic qualities. Parrots are smart and they've got gorgeous feathers. You know, they're very social and they have an incredible amount of energy. Their whole body is geared towards flight and flock behavior. But caring for our exotic pet's social, intellectual, physical, and emotional needs can seem like a full-time job. But those needs, when they're not met, our hand-fed parrots will become, you know, anxious and aggressive and that's going to result in some challenging behavior. A lot of people wonder, okay, how do I stop aggressive behavior in birds? But wouldn't it be nice to prevent it from happening in the first place? Environmental wellness is exactly what you need. It helps with both prevention and correcting that challenging behavior. Okay, so I bet you're wondering, where do I start with all this? I mean, environmental wellness is kind of a trendy term or a pop term. And, uh, you know, people wonder, well, what does it really mean? Well, the Richard M. Schubel Parrot Wellness and Welfare Program at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine is dedicated to uh, researching these kind of topics. They've identified six major factors for enhancing wellness and welfare in our pet birds. But let's back up a bit. How does environmental wellness impact behavior in the first place? Well, imagine a time when your needs weren't getting met. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep or you're hungry or some crap's going down at work. Um, sitting in all day at a desk can make your back hurt and dealing with deadlines and obligations. All that compounding stress can really take a toll on your mood and your behavior. I don't know about you, but when I get stressed out, I'm just not myself. I'm a lot more reactive and snappy. I'm just not resilient as I usually am. And your bird is like that too. You know, think of the body like a balloon, with stressors being like a puff of air. And after so many puffs of air, the balloon's gonna burst at some point. So when an individual experiences stress, whether it's a bird or a human, the brain sends out stress hormones like cortisol, uh, adrenaline, norepinephrine into the bloodstream. Small amounts of these stress hormones, you know, are good. They'll support you to take necessary action for safety or whatever. But a constant barrage of stress hormones causes a constant state of anxiety, tension, and distress. We all know that chronic stress plays havoc on the mind and the body. And this includes our birds. So by setting up your bird's environment to dramatically reduce the stress that it experiences, you're supporting positive bird behavior. The goal is to enhance your exotic bird's life. And when your bird's physical and emotional needs are met, your pet is much more capable of positively engaging with you and the family. It's much more apt to have a good disposition to go along with it. It might seem like a lot of work at first, but really it's about establishing some parrot care routines. With environmental wellness, you're going to be able to set your bird up for success. So let's jump into what the Richard M. Schubel Parrot Wellness and Welfare Program have described as being environmentally uh, wellness for your pet. First, uh, if you want to grab a pen and paper to take some notes, go ahead and do that right now. But keep in mind that the show notes below are going to have a lot of helpful information and links below. So, as of this writing, the Schubolt team has identified six major factors for enhancing wellness in our captive words. These include things like preventative health, nutrition, behavior training, environmental enrichment, 
pain prevention and management, and pediatric and geriatric care. Preventative health is so important for all animals, but it's particularly important for our pet birds. And that's because our pet birds naturally hide illness, pain, and injuries from us. You know, in the wild, one sick flock member can endanger the entire flock. So if one bird's acting a little bit puny and it doesn't feel well, the rest of the flock is in danger. And the flock's going to run that sick bird off because they don't want a predator coming around to endanger everybody. Our birds' tendency to hide illness and injuries makes preventative care really important. Just like with people, health issues are much easier to treat when you catch the problem early. So annual checkups for your bird are a must. Now you're going to want to monitor your bird's health on a weekly basis too at home. Two of the best things that you can do are to get the habit of weighing your bird on a weekly uh, schedule using a gram scale. Be sure to keep a running log so that you can tell when your bird is running or is losing weight. Weight loss is one of the first signs of bird illness. If your bird loses, say, 10% of its weight or more, you're going to want to get into the vet office pretty quickly. You'll also want to get into the habit of examining your bird's droppings. Now, that's not a pleasant conversation, but if you take a glance at your bird's droppings on the bottom of the cage every morning, you'll be able to know if your bird has diarrhea or if its droppings are just not normal. And if things don't clear up in a day or two, again, call your vet. Veterinarians tell us that nutrition is one of the most common problems that they see in birds. And what I mean by that is people don't feed their birds right and so birds are malnourished and this can cause some very serious illnesses in birds. What we feed our birds has a direct impact on their health and happiness. Learn how to feed your bird appropriately to avoid, to avoid the deadly effects of malnutrition. And while each species is a little bit different, make it a point to learn what your bird species uh, eats in the wild. For instance, you'd feed it on and a collectus parrot differently than you'd feed him a caw. Overwhelmingly, experts tell us that if you want, uh, that you'll want to choose a base for your bird's diet very wisely. For instance, most birds will do well with a base of really high quality pellets. And then approximately 60% of the diet needs to be raw whole foods that are nutritional powerhouses. Raw foods include like a diverse range of vegetables, fruits, sprouts, bird teas, herbs, grains, and that sort of thing. So the more diverse, the better. Of course, there are certain foods to stay away from, but if you don't know where to start, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy of the Parrot's Fine Cuisine Cookbook and Nutritional Guide. Now, this book has like 60 recipes to support the bioavailability of each and every uh, plant-based product that you feed your bird. A lot of people are worried that they can't get their bird to eat the vegetables in the first place. So, um, I, I've got a video on that that I'd like to encourage you to watch. It's called Nine Ways to Teach Your Parrot How to Eat Its Vegetables. Now, keep in mind that you're not going to find bird pellets scattered along the floor of a rainforest or a jungle. Um, it's not that birds don't like raw plant-based foods. You know, they don't really even have the taste buds that we have. They only have about 30% of the taste buds that we have. In fact, their, tens their sense of taste just isn't all that great. The issue is that birds learn what foods are safe to eat from their parents and, and in their flock. If caretakers haven't taught their bird that vegetables are safe and good for them, and that the birds should eat them, then the bird's gonna avoid it like the plague. So watch my video about the nine ways to get your bird to eat its vegetables, and I'll include a link to it in the show notes. Even though we hear so much about environmental enrichment, it's kind of like a buzzword. So environmental enrichment is one of the things that the Schubert team talks about, and it's really important for your bird's overall well-being. So what exactly does it mean? Think of environmental enrichment as like stimulating the senses. Yeah, I'm talking about things like, you know, vision, auditory, kinesthetic, and so on. Imagine being a wild parrot, how busy they are throughout the day. They're foraging for food and they're socializing with flock mates, manipulating their environment. Gosh, they fly miles a day looking for foraging sites. It's completely 
different than the lifestyle that our pet birds experience. Obviously, you're never going to be able to replicate the exercise and the rainforest and jungles and such, but you can keep your bird busy to prevent boredom. Experts tell us that there's different styles of enrichments or different types of enrichments that you're going to want to offer your bird. Of course, they don't all need to happen each and every day, but birds need sensory enrichment, occupational enrichment, foraging opportunities, and of course, exercise. So sensory enrichment is offering your bird um, visual things and things to hear, exercise opportunities and such. Birds, you know, they, they have much better vision than we do and they hear better than a dog. And did you know that when the rainforest gets quiet, that's a sign that a predator is around. That's really stressful for our captive birds. So you're going to want to provide your bird with noise and visual stimulation. It's pretty easy to set up a TV or an audio system in your bird's environment. My birds are a big fan of Parrot TV for, on uh, YouTube. And, you know, they listen to the birds squawking and they watch the birds preening and chattering and all, all day long. And it's way better than being stuck in a cage with nothing to look at but four bare walls. I also have a foraging tree outside of the cage door. So the cage door is open and the birds have lots of opportunity to climb about the tree and exercise uh, all day long. And that's enriching for them too. So kinesthetic enrichment involves creating opportunities for your bird to move about throughout the day and to get that much needed exercise. You don't want your bird to turn into a perch potato. You can create a fun cage environment where your bird has to climb around to different perches and different uh, toys and foraging stations throughout the week and rotate those uh, toys and those um, foraging stations. Even having a play stand outside, with an, outside of the cage with an open door is really enriching for your bird. You know, if you really want to get creative, check out some of the aviaries and the bird rooms on Pinterest to get some great ideas how to encourage your bird to exercise. Now, foraging is another way to provide environmental enrichment. It uh, also wards off a lot of boredom for birds. Wild birds teach their young how to uh, work for and search for food. Um, and birds spend wild birds spend about, you know, I don't know, hours a day foraging for food. This involves things like digging up roots to eat, cracking open nuts, locating different ripe fruits, flowers and fauna and such. So when you teach your bird how to forage, you're doing it a huge favor. If you're not sure where to begin, check out my book, Teach Your Bird to Forage, and make it a point to teach foraging and offer your bird plenty of opportunities to work for its food throughout the day. Okay, so the fourth strategy for environmental wellness that, that the Shoebolt team talks about is behavior training. And uh, if you think about it for a second, you realize that wild parrots have a really complex uh, social structure to make the flock run smoothly, of course. And parrot moms and dads spend a long time teaching their young foundational behaviors. That is, what's expected of them in the flock and how to behave appropriately with the, the flock. Now, your bird's going to need to know foundational behaviors as well. As a bird caretaker, think of the behavior training that you need to do in two different segments. First, you're going to want to teach the foundational behaviors, but you're also going to want to know things about positive behavior reinforcement so that you can address challenging behaviors as they arise. So let's talk a little bit about foundational behaviors. Some of the things that mom and dad teach their young include um, things like, you know, what's safe to eat, uh, how to find food, where to find it. Um, they all, birds also need to learn self-care things like bathing and preening. And I've already talked about how mom and dad teach their young how to forage. Basic manners are also important. You are your bird's flock. So teach your bird things like how to come out of its cage and go back in without a fuss. It's also important that your bird knows how to stay in place. Uh, we call this stationing. And when how to come when it's called. And we call that recall. It's very important that your bird allows for its body to be touched and manipulated so that you can perform wellness checks and your vet can do uh, veterinary exams when your bird needs it. Also, you're going to want to groom your pet, so it needs to be comfortable with having its body touched. 
Clicker training is a great place to start if you're not sure how to train a bird. It's like a great primer on how to positively train your bird new behaviors from scratch. I have a link to the book in my, in the show notes. But basically, this book teaches you how to use positive reinforcement and basic ignoring strategies in real time so that you can reinforce the right behaviors and your bird then knows how to behave. It's much better to know how to behave than how to not behave because the bird is motivated by positive reinforcement. So, getting back to the Shoebold environmental wellness uh, strategies, the fifth thing they talk about is pain prevention and management. So, pain prevention involves a couple of things. First, it involves bird proofing your house, similar to how you'd child proof your home if you had a toddler around. Know that birds are very curious and love to explore, so they're going to get into trouble. Learn about the common bird accidents that uh, uh, your bird might experience so that you can prevent them from happening. I have a link to a great article about this in the show notes. Also, you're going to want to get a bird first aid kit and create a hospital cage to support your bird just in case it has an injury or when it has an injury, I should say, because it's going to happen. So I've got links to that stuff as well. Earlier, I had talked about how birds hide their illnesses and injuries from us, but that includes hiding their pain. So how do you spot pain in a bird? When you're looking uh, at how to detect whether your bird is in pain or not, you're going to have to really be a detective. And so there's certain things that you're going to look out for. For instance, a bird that's in pain isn't going to perform normal bird behaviors. They're going to diminish and and change. This would include things like you're going to see decreased social interaction, such as like perching away from the cage door, maybe in a corner and not moving as much. Birds are trying to stay out of your sight so that you're not going to realize that they're sick. And um, then you're also going to see that the bird's not going to groom itself as much. Now birds are also going to engage in what we call guarding behavior. Um, This is when your bird changes its posture and tries to protect that painful area so that you'll not notice that it's in pain and it may be trying to hide from you as well. So birds that are in pain tend to be more aggressive uh, toward flock mates. That would include you or other pets or even you know if they have a cage mate. They don't want to be handled when they don't feel well and they're in pain. And they also tend to over groom that painful spot. Uh, they, may even, they may even start plucking the feathers out in that area or start mutilating, self-mutilating in that area. I've attached a link to a pain assessment questionnaire that you can take to determine if your bird's in pain and how severe that pain is. And that that link's in the show note, in the show notes. Um, It's going to help you to rate the severity of your bird's pain. And of course, if your bird's in pain, contact your avian vet to get some bird-safe medications that will support it and help your bird feel better. You might even want to ask your bird about CBD oil. Last thing that Shubold and his team talk about is specialized pediatric and geriatric care. So young birds as well as senior birds need special care. Just like with most pets, baby birds are fragile and they're a little bit clumsy. They can get hypoglycemic or shock really fast. So you're going to need to be really attentive to their eating schedules and their sleeping schedules. You've got to balance out kind of babying them as well along with teaching them how to be independent. So make sure that the perches for your baby bird and your geriatric birds are lower in the cage so that if they fall off the perch you know at any time that they land on a softer surface you might want to line the bottom of the bird cage with a towel you know they don't have as far to fall and then falling on a towel will give them some cushion if you will a baby bird also isn't going to know what's safe and what's not it's it depends on you to look out for its safety so if you acquire a young bird make sure that you learn how to properly care for it likewise senior your birds have special needs. Their dietary needs change as they get older and so you have to be careful to make sure that their their nutritional needs are getting met. Older birds undergo a lot of health changes, behavior changes, and they even may have some uh, mobility issues. So it's important to make accommodation for these aging issues. 
Get into a daily routine of checking your bird out in its golden years. Check to see if it's eating and drinking properly and examine its cage and its environment to determine its activity level. And then of course, keep an eye on its weight because they can go down quickly. Um, in addition, older birds are prone to a number of health issues, like, for instance, you know, liver and kidney problems, as well as heart and lung issues. And these are more prevalent if your bird hasn't had a healthy diet for most of its life. So learn the signs and symptoms of these disorders so that you can get early treatment. So in summary, I've talked about six super important ways to offer your parrot environmental wellness. These strategies will not only improve your bird's quality of life, but they'll reduce the stressors that your bird that your bird experiences and go a long way toward eliminating challenging bird behaviors. Hey, if you found anything in this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I'd love to see your comments of how environmental wellness has helped your bird feel better and behave better. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a couple of videos a, a month and uh, you know if you want to be one of the first ones to see my videos, just click that bell button and you'll get notified whenever I put a new one out. Also, you can join my private Facebook group. It's called Unruffled RX Feather Plucking Help. Uh, a lot of times I post my videos there first. So until next time, let's just keep providing for parrot wellness. Thanks a lot for joining me, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.